Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we are going to be taking a good hard look at yet another mid-range mobile. There's been absolutely really floods of them lately, this time it's the turn of the IQ Neo 6. And that's right, for this video I actually learned how to pronounce IQ, so for once I don't sound like a total melon. The Neo 6 is on sale from June the 2nd and it seems on paper to be strong competition for the Realmes out there with an HDR10 Plus ready AMOLED display, plenty of game and grunt and a Samsung GW1P camera sensor to hopefully capture lovely looking photos of stuff. And that's the crack, so let's whip the IQ Neo 6 on out of the box, take you on a photo and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first, as always, what is in the box? You've got one IQ Neo 6 smartphone. You've got yourself a chunky old 80 watt flash charge adapter. Some decidedly thrilling Type-C USB action. One of those Type-C to 3.5mm headphone jack dongly adapter thingies. And reliable as always, you've got a condom case you can slap on the IQ Neo 6 and keep it safe from harm. And there you have it, that's everything. So let's check out the phone. Uh, so here we have in all of its splendor the IQ Neo 6. It's actually surprisingly slender for a 6.6 .6 inch and quite light as well at 190 grams. And I've got to say, I rather like the look of it as well. From up front, it could be easily mistaken for a Samsung smartphone because you've got very skinny bezels surrounding that display and then of course the centrally positioned selfie orifice. The display itself is flat, but there is a slight subtle curvature of the glass at the very, very edges there. And then flip it around and the Neo 6 is nothing glamorous from the back. It is just your standard plastic finish. But I've got to say, I think it looks rather smart and I like the perfectly square camera chassis as well, which sort of stands out a bit from the crowd. It's got an almost retro vibe to it, helped along with the uh, pixelated title tag there. And you can grab the IQ Neo 6 in a couple of different colours, Dark Nova or this here, Cyber Rage model. Apparently, according to the official press blurb, this colour represents a journey through the bustling streets of the cyberpunk city of the future, surrounded by flickering neon lights. Sounds to me like someone's been smashing the ganja supply again. The Neo 6 isn't water resistant, but it seems to be fine with the occasional little bit of splashing. No more than that, really. And uh, there's no mention of Gorilla Glass up front either, but you do at least get a pre-installed screen protector slapped on there, so that's something. So overall, very nice stuff. And on the software front, well, it is Android 12, thankfully. None of that old creaky Android 11 or any of that shenanigans. And slapped on top, as ever, is the amusingly titled FunTouch OS 12. Fairly standard as far as the uh, Chinese smartphone launches go. You've got a reasonably stock Android sort of vibe uh, these days. So you've got your apps tray if you want it. You've got your Google Discover feed. You can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on the desktop. But you can also customise to your heart's content as well, play around with the likes of the UI colour, dive on into the home settings, there's lots to meddle about with here, including the likes of the grid size. And you'll find a lot more options if you jump into the settings menu and then go to dynamic effects here, you can mess about with the fingerprint icon animation, the transitions, all of that lovely stuff. And quite a few other bonus bits chucked in here as well, the likes of the ultra game mode, which we'll definitely be checking out later. The occasional little quirk cropping up here and there, for instance the IQ Neo 6 doesn't seem to ever actually want to turn off, you press that power button it just goes to the lock screen. That's possibly a feature rather than a bug but I can't actually find how to disable it anywhere in here. And you also sadly yes get a fair amount of crapware packed on here as well, most of which I've never even heard of, by Jews the something. Uh, some sort of learning app which immediately wants to, uh, to get my phone number off me so that can get right to f Go the Amazon shopping app, something called Cred. It's not actually too bad compared with a lot of Xiaomi rivals, for instance, which tend to just absolutely slather these things in crapware. I've got bloody LinkedIn in there though, boo hiss, but thankfully you can just uninstall all of this rubbish if you want. You've got the usual fantastic Android privacy features crammed in here, and then you've also got an in-display fingerprint sensor as well. It's just an optical effort, but so far Touchwood seems to do the job nicely. On storage, before I forget as well, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. As you can see, this is the 256 model. And it's good that you've got the choice of upgrading to that 256 as well, because there is no space, sadly, in the double-sided SIM tray for a micro SD memory card. Now, no real complaints when it comes to the display either. It's a 6.62 inch AMOLED panel here, full HD plus resolution, 2400 by 1080 pixels, so nice and crisp. Got all the usual benefits of AMOLED technology, including nice wide viewing angles, quite handy if you want to watch something with a couple of mates on the move. 
colors are reasonably poppy and you've got nice deep blacks nice sharp contrast you've got full support for hdr 10 plus video for streaming services and the like I'd prefer that that centrally positioned selfie cam orifice was shunted away in a corner or something so it's slightly less intrusive, but it is reasonably dinky at least. So overall, like a lot of mid-range smartphones these days, great visuals, so ideal for anyone who wants to, you know, browse their photo albums, kick back with some Disney+, Plus, some Netflix, whatever. And check up that brightness to the maximum levels as well, you'll have no issues seeing it, even on a bright sunshiny day, which we might someday get here in Blighty. Got all the usual shenanigans in here, eye protection modes and everything. You can mess around with the colour output as well if you like. And if we scroll all the way down to screen refresh rate, you'll see it's set to dynamic mode by default. But you can chuck it up to 120Hz refresh rate full time if you like, that's the maximum refresh. Uh, but yeah, you might as well just leave it on dynamic, otherwise you'll just be unnecessarily draining battery power. You do actually get a stereo speaker set up here on the iQ Neo 6, like some other mid-range mobiles, although I'm not expecting the best ever performance, but I could be pleasantly surprised. So let's try bumping up that volume, see what we've got. Wide, ultra wide, and an impressive telephoto shooter here, which now offers a continuous 85 to 125 mil zoom, thanks to the revamped mechanics. And Sony has crammed quite a few other upgrades into the Xperia 1 Mark IV's camera tech as well. You know what, that's actually pretty good. You've got good distribution of the sound between the top and the bottom speaker. And on the maxed out volume, it's reasonably loud and actually not too tinny. So, you know, fair play, IQ. You've got full support for high-res audio. Good news if you've got, you know, service like Deezer where you can download high-fidelity tracks. No Dolby Atmos support or anything like that, but you do have the Super Audio feature, which allows you to uh, play around with the audio output depending on what you're up to. And you've got Bluetooth 5.2 support here as well, so got no issues when streaming to speakers, headphones, whatever. So let's shift on to the performance, and the iQ Neo 6 is powered by the Snapdragon 870 chipset, which has been packed into loads of other phones, including the Black Shark 5 gaming handset, the Moto Edge 20 Pro, the Poco F4, of course. And it's backed here by either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. I've got the 12 gig model, as you can see there. And so far, the everyday performance has been nice and slick and smooth. No little judders or stumbles while flicking around in the UI and the various apps. And very respectable benchmarking scores there as well. Better than quite a lot of other Snapdragon 870 phones that I've reviewed, probably because it's got 12 gigs of RAM packed in there. But of course, as always, the true test is a good bit of gaming. So I got my Genshin Impact on the go, went and uh, got my face clobbered in by all kinds of nasty beasties with clubs. But that was mostly just down to my complete lack of skills because the Neo 6 handled Genshin Impact absolutely gracefully. I did keep it on the medium detail settings for the most part because when you bump up the graphics settings a bit, there is the occasional little judder and stumble. But on the default medium settings, absolutely fine. Nice, steady, stable frame rate for the most part. I found the screen sensitivity and the response absolutely perfect and you do have dedicated gaming tools packed on this thing as well just to help out which can help block notifications for instance you can record the action if you want to all kinds of shenanigans and the Neo 6 like a lot of its mid-range mobile rivals also boasts an x-axis linear motor for some serious rumble with compatible games like Call of Duty. And even if you are gaming for extended periods, thankfully the Neo 6 remains nice and cool. And that's helped along by the Cascade cooling system that IQ has packed inside of this thing. If you like your graphite plates, well, this thing is loaded, baby. And courtesy of that Snapdragon 870 chipset, you've also got a 5G modem built in there as well. So full 5G support, as you'd expect from a mid-range mobile in 2022. So far, so pretty impressive. And the Neo 6 also boasts some decent battery life as well. You've got a 4,700 milliamp hour capacity cell crammed inside of that slender chassis. And in my brief time with this smartphone, I managed to get a full day of use from a 100% charge. No worries whatsoever. The drain doesn't seem too bad, even when the screen is on an awful lot. Even when I was getting my Genshin on, the battery drain wasn't as bad as quite a lot of other mid ranges that I've tested out. And when the Neo 6 is absolutely pooped out, fully drained, well, no worries, because you've got that super snazzy, ultra-fast 80-watt charger bundled in the box. That'll give you around a half charge from a fully drained battery in just over 10 minutes, which is, you know, I mean, why would you need any more than that, frankly? And if you're going to leave it plugged in all night long, no worries, you've got the adaptive charging support that most smartphones come with these days. So it won't just, you know, leap up to 100% and then just keep on charging all night long, potentially harming the battery in the long term. And so, as ever, let's conclude this unboxing video with a squint at the camera tech. And the Neo 6 packs in a 64 megapixel primary 
camera sensor. It's a Samsung effort, the GW1P to be precise, with built-in optical image stabilization. And so far, gotta say, seems an enjoyable enough camera experience. The focal speed, nice and nippy, just locks onto your subject, keeps them crisp. All of the usual camera modes and features have been crammed in here, the likes of Google Lens. You've got an AI mode for scene optimization, loads of bloody filters to play around with. And here's a few test photos snapped over the course of a couple of days in various sorts of testing conditions, including high dynamic range and at night time as well. When the lighting's good, colour reproduction's pretty close to what you'll see with the naked eye. You've also got plenty of crisp detail packed into every frame. Although I did notice that the Neo 6 struggled if you're shooting in bright light or against the light in some way, often lots of flaring and saturation and other issues. Indoors, however, it did better than I expected, to be perfectly honest. Again, plenty of detail packed in there. The shots didn't get grainy or too warm or anything. And in more ambient conditions, sometimes your photos can look a bit murky, but otherwise, generally, again, pretty good for a mid-range mobile. But you can always stick on the night mode, and that will generally produce brighter, more poppy results, as long as you can keep your hands still. And then in addition to that 64 megapixel lens, you've also got a simple 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. You can expect more basic results with this bad boy, but it's fine if you just want a pulled back view. And there's also a 2 megapixel super macro lens as well, if that's your bag. And then you've got plenty of bonus camera modes packed inside of here as well. Let's just turn it off the super macro mode, including the night mode, which I already mentioned, of course. You've got a portrait mode to add a bokeh style background effect. As you can see there, a variety of different effects and also you can change the uh, sort of degree of the bokeh. And various other camera modes including a super resolution mode, you've got a pro mode for full manual control. It allows you to mess around with the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance, you can even shoot in raw format if you like. And if you like to shoot a lot of home movies as well, well good news, the Neo 6 supports 4K Ultra HD video at 30 or 60 frames per second if you prefer a more hyper realistic sort of result and again here's some quick simple home movie footage i shot around the homestead the last couple of days and again as long as the lighting conditions are good the results will be good otherwise it can be a bit of a mixed bag and then last up around the front of the neo 6 you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter seems to like default into the portrait mode again with that bokeh style effect and here's some pics of my baldy bonds that I snapped using that selfie shooter indoors and out. And again, overall seems very respectable indeed. If you want to shoot a bit of video with that front facing selfie cam while well, you're topping off there at full HD resolution, pretty standard results from mid range mobile. The picture quality is absolutely fine as long as the lighting conditions on balls. Audio is clearly and cleanly picked up as well. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a delicious little nutshell is the fresh new iQ Neo 6 mid-range smartphone. And yeah, it's not particularly thrilling or exciting. It doesn't do anything revolutionary that we haven't seen in a mid-range mobile before, but it is a very solid all-round blower. There's very little at all to complain about here. The media chops really solid, the performance strong enough to get gaming, even on the likes of the mighty Genshin Impact battery life certainly seems dependable enough as well and the overall UI and everyday experience very few complaints indeed but are you tempted by the iQ Neo 6 be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week cheers everyone love you